Hello. I am back again. Yep. Cat here. Who I want to talk to, talk to you guys about, I'm going to talk to you guys about selling a veto. I put that on the notes of the broadcast before I uh, push that live. What is selling to veto? I love talking about this. I, I learned this a long time ago from one of my peers way back when. And this is when I started selling TV as a very young rookie, you know, salesperson. And I was always taught to sell to Vito. What is Vito? Actually, somebody even wrote a book. If you go to uh, Amazon, you can find Selling to Vito. There's a book. Someone actually wrote it. Uh, and it, what it is, is selling to very important people at the top of the organization. That's what selling to veto is. So why am I going to talk to you about this? So let me just backdate a little bit and give you a little history. So I had a client that went to a workshop and it was an all day workshop. And one of the workshops, they um, sat and listened to a presenter who was talking about lead generation and what have you. And at the end of the workshop, you know, they have the Q&A and they rose their hand and they, they uh, asked the question. And, and my client has a very high end product. It is intelligent uh, property and it's really complicated. And, you know, so their question to the presenter was, you know, hey, you know, I got a, a, a product and I want to know who do you suggest I sell to? Who do you suggest that I start marketing my business to? because I want to make sure that I'm going to the right person. And uh, I wasn't part of the conversation, so I only got the cliff notes from my client. But they were told that they should go to the assistance of all the companies that they wanted to tar target. And when my client came to me and he told me this, I was mortified. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? You're going to go to all the assistants and you're going to pitch your stuff to them your very complicated product that's not very cheap. You're going to go to all the systems. So the reason why I want to talk about this is if you're being advised or if you have never been trained who to market to or go to, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm just going to cut to the chase and get to it. Because when I was trained this, I was a lot more successful doing the selling to veto than I was when I was chasing the assistant. And so let me walk you through the process. Okay. So what is the philosophy behind selling to veto? The, the whole philosophy is going as far up as you can go up the food chain all the way to the top. You're selling to C level people. These are the very important people at the top of the food chain. These people are the people you want to go to. These people have skin in the game. They care if they make more money, they care if they save money, they care if your product, goods, or services is going to change the dynamics of their organization. So they actually care. And they're the ones that are going to pull the trigger. Because if you hit a pain point with them, when you're talking to them and you hit a pain point with them, they're going to react. And you and if it depends on what pain point, so you don't know what trigger is going to trigger them. You don't know if it's going to be price. You don't know if it's going to be their bottom line. You don't know if it's going to be their shareholders or whatever, but they have more of the pain on them, the honest on them than anybody else in the organization. That assistant is not going to have the pain the CEO or any VP in the organization has. I can assure you that. And I can promise you that. And if you think differently or if you want to have this argument that they do, please call me. Let's have the conversation because I'd love to have that debate. OK, so the whole philosophy about selling to Vito, go to the top, call all the VPs, call all the C-level peoples at the very top. You know, when you're dialing for dollars, that's the person you're going to call every time. OK, and then you're going to come up with the bit of information that is going to strike a chord with them. And that bitter bit of information, you need to test on someone, but you need to figure out this bit of information that's really going to push a button. That's going to push a button of some pain point. And I'll tell you what, bottom line and money, it's a pain point. And if anybody called me and said they can save me money every month, every year, whatever, damn straight, I'm going to pick up the phone and talk to them. So 
Uh, if you can't think of what your pain point is, test it with someone, you know, role play, do something, but find out what it is. Call this person. This person's probably not going to take your call the first time, second time or whatever, but just be persistent and call this person. At some point you might get through. Okay. And you're actually going to get the person on the line and you're going to find out that they're going to be in a hurry or you caught them off guard or whatever, but you have that that seconds, those few seconds to talk to this person that you can convince them to sit down or meet with you or think about your product. And most times, okay, here's the beautiful thing. If you, if you have struck a chord with them, they're going to tell you to meet with John or Mary, the right hand man. Okay. And when they tell you to meet with John or Mary, you have power. You have so much leverage now. And this is why it's so important to go as high as you can and make sure that you talk to these people because they don't have time. Most times they don't have time to meet with you and they're going to divert you to someone else and just hope that they don't divert you to that assistant. Okay. And so now you have John or Mary's name and they're going to be in a hurry to get off the line. So don't, please don't, these people, if they're a type personalities like me, they get to the point, they cut to the chase and they're ready to move on to the next thing because their day is full. They got a lot of shit to do. Okay. So you take it with the grain salt and you say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to call that person later today, tomorrow, whatever you tell them and you're going to get at it. Okay. And so now you are equipped, okay? And you need to put yourself in a frame of mind when you're going to call, you know, John or Mary, this, their right-hand man, you're going to be equipped and you better be ready for this because you're, what your strategy is now is you pick up the phone and you call John or Mary and you say, hey, John, I just talked to Chuck, your CEO, and he told me that I need to meet with you because he's interested in learning about our product, goods, or services. What do you think Chuck's going or John's going to do? Because it was Chuck that told me to call John. What do you think John's going to do? John's going to set up an appointment with you because Chuck, Chuck told you to call John and you're name dropping all these people. So he has to meet with you. So now you're in and now you better get your pitch good because you have this opportunity now to razzle dazzle John so that he can take you to Chuck. This is why you got to sell the veto. Now, so there are some people that disagree with me on this and that's okay, but it's my strategy. It's what I do and it's what is effective for me because as a C-level person myself, I, when I call on businesses, you know, uh, it's the old strategy of chiefs like to talk with chiefs, you know, and so when I call, you know, I let them know I'm the CEO of my company and I want to talk to them and, you know, I'm going to solve this problem, blah, 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 blah. And uh, a lot of times chiefs are like thrilled that another chief called them. So just keep this in mind that selling DeVito is, is extremely effective. It works. Try it. So let me now take you through the route of you calling the assistant. So I've done this. I know how it works because... You know, it was a something I did over and over and over when I was young and I was selling. I learned the hard way until I had a mentor who put me in the right direction. OK, so if you're calling to all the assistants, so imagine this, you're calling all the assistants, you're calling, calling. They're more likely to take your call because that's their job. They have to take your call. And if you're asking for the VP, uh, they're going to put you in voicemail. They're going to just take a message, take a message, take a message. Um, if you're trying to sell the assistant, okay, they're going to take your name and number and they're going to let you know that somebody's going to get back to you and nobody's ever going to get back to you, okay, because you're going to go into the trash can file. That's where you're going because that's where all the salespeople go. And if you get through, let's say, the assistant and you met with the assistant, do you honestly think that your the assistant is going to take your product, good, or service up to the VP? I just want you to think about that for a second. Yeah. So if you go to the VP and the VP tells you to meet with John, you have a leg in. You now can present your goods, products, or services to somebody. You are valid because 
the VP, Chuck, told you to meet with John. If you go to the assistant, you're going to go in circles and circles and circles and circles. And you may never, ever, ever talk to the VP because it's that assistant's job to gatekeep the v VP. They're there to protect the VP. Only so many people and only certain people can go see the VP. Now do you get where I'm going with this? So it's really, really important that when you're strategizing and cold calling and prospecting, that you really think about the key players that are involved and you think about the people that are going to have the most pain for your good service product or service, whatever it is. Okay. Because the person that it really totally affects their bottom line or, you know, revenue or something, that's the person that is going to be the most willing to do business with you or talk to you or hear about your product, goods or services. And so um, you can test this and you can get back to me. I would love to hear the feedback that you get because it is a great strategy. It does work. I promise you, you just have to do it. And not a lot of people are calling the VPs. Um, I, you know, I, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Like I don't get a lot of calls every day. I don't, I get a lot of emails. Yep. Mm hmm. I get a lot of emails, but I don't get a lot of calls. And so making use of the phone and calling people, but calling the right person, call that VP and let your name just get embedded in their head because you've left so many messages. At some point, you're going to break them and they're going to finally say, oh, my God, this person is so person, you know, there's, they just can't give up. I got to take this call because I got to hear what this person's got to say, you know, and, you know, I, we can talk about messages, but I think that should be another topic because I have my whole, you know, thing on leaving messages too. So, um, let me know what your thoughts are. If you do try this strategy, please let me know, get back to me. And, um, just to recap and bring this back around, the reason why I don't just get to the point, get to the point, get to the point is because there is a guideline. LinkedIn gave me a guideline and I'm adhering to it because this is a privilege and I take it with a lot of pride and I am so very thankful to have this privilege and I don't want it to be revoked from me. So that's my two cents on that on my house cleaning rules. And uh, hopefully I don't have to go through this conversation again. Um, okay. I will. I look forward to getting your comments and replying to them. I don't like doing it while I'm doing my live because I want to be respectful of your time. And I want to make sure I'm focused here on you, not on my phone, because that's not important. You are. Okay. Thanks a lot. And oh, and a quick plug. My podcast launched Yay, yesterday. Hope uh, Go check it out. Let me know what your thoughts are. I need reviews. I need reviews. Please, please, please. It is stand out in the letter in grow.com. Stand out in the letter in grow.com. We're on I2, Spotify, you know, what have you. And I know I'm not supposed to be selling, but this is just a plug. It's a simple plug. Uh, so until I talk to you guys again, if there's anything you want me to talk about, if there was anything you want me to coach you on and train you or whatever, I'm here 30 years, this girl, 30 years. I got you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.